interrupt this program to give you a bulletin just received from one of our naval units at sea. A large object traveling at supersonic speed is headed over the North Atlantic toward the east coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Drew Pearson. We bring you this special radio television broadcast in order to give you the very latest information on an amazing phenomenon. The arrival of a space ship in Washington. The Army has taken every precaution to meet any emergency which may develop. Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, I think something is happening. <laughs> to give you these facts. But if you threaten to extend your violence, this earth of yours will be reduced to a burned out cinder. But he's a robot. Without you, what could he do? There's no limit to what he could do. He could destroy the earth. All vehicles, close in. Let's go. Looking right into mine, I was terrified. A face? A human face? A ghastly caricature, like something distorted by pressure. A horrible, grotesque imitation of the face looking right into my eyes. To think, a fantastic gnome like you had to hurtle out of space put this power into my hands. I'm going to tear out every secret you've got. I'll give you until 11 o'clock to try what you can. If you're not back by that time, we'll open fire. But you've got to at least give us time. By that time, your job must be finished. If it isn't, what's his appearance here mean? At midnight, when the planet is at its closest approach to Earth, an invasion will be launched. Ten fifty nine. Fire. saw them land from outer space. He saw them capture innocent people only to destroy. <laughs> Father turned against son. People changed into strange, weird animals. A general of the army becomes a saboteur. Trusted police turned into arsonists. The boy's parents changed into killers. But nobody 
isn't getting anywhere out there. Nobody can locate anything. Anybody. The Martians. We've got to start the... Invaders from Mars. Capturing humans at will for their own sinister purposes. Turning them into diabolical instruments of destruction. Invaders from Mars, weird, fantastic beings of a super intelligence, ruling a race of synthetic humans and pitting them against mankind's dream to conquer the universe. Come on, step on it. Search every tunnel. We gotta find Ronaldo and the kid. When the colonel gives a signal, get back here on the double. This could be the beginning of the end for the human race. For what men first thought were meteors or the often ridiculed flying saucers are in reality the flaming vanguard of the invasion from Mars. Looks like they're gonna come out of that gully pretty soon. We'll have to rush our defenses to be ready when they do. The guy can need plenty of reinforcements. We'll get them. Lieutenant! Look! They slash across country like scythes, wiping out everything that's trying to get away from them. That explains why communication is cut the moment their machines begin moving. Montreal's blacked out. Nothing more has come through. Same thing that happened on the Pacific Coast. Anything from them yet? No, Mr. Secretary. We've had nothing from San Francisco for over five hours. The nations of the world mobilized their armed might, rushing to defend the Earth against the unknown weapons of the super race from the Red Planet. Is there nothing that can stop the Martian death machines? Guns, tanks, bombs, they're like toys against them. We know now that we can't beat their machines. We've got to beat them. All over the world, human beings cower before the onslaught of these unearthly enemies, whom no one has ever seen. <coughs> Panic that sweeps around the globe as the great masses of mankind flee blindly in a headlong stampede of hysteria. saucers have invaded our planet. Washington, London, Paris, Moscow are key targets. The whole world is under attack. Can it survive? survivors of a disintegrated solar system. At this moment, the remainder of our fleet is circling your globe. What do you want with me? Arrange for your world leaders to confer with us in the city of Washington. They set up an electronic screen. The artillery doesn't penetrate. Never before has the screen reached such heights of excitement. Breathtaking spectacle. Hair-raising terror. See the saucer men's high frequency disintegrator. See flying saucers travel thousands of miles in seconds. See great cities leveled by flying saucer monsters. Russ, look. The same kind of thing that's watched us since the beginning of the project. People of Earth, a 
attention. People of Earth, attention. This is a voice speaking to you from thousands of miles beyond your planet. They're coming down to take over. They made that clear to us in the saucer. My wife and I are the only ones left alive. Stop! Will you tell these fools I'm not crazy? Make them listen to me before it's too late! Listen to me. Please, listen. If you don't, if you won't, if you fail to understand, then the same incredible terror that's menacing me will strike at you! from another world, spawned in the light years of space, unleashed to take over the bodies and souls of the people of our planet, bringing a new dimension in terror to the giant super scope screen. It's whatever intelligence or instinct it is that can govern the forming of human flesh and blood out of thin air is it's fantastically powerful, beyond any comprehension. A cursed, dreadful, malevolent thing was happening to those he loved. It isn't just an ordinary body, is it? I never saw one like it. It looks... unused. The sensational star discovery of the view from Poppy's head. And now an undreamed of horror makes her life and love a vortex of fear. Jack! <laughs> Suddenly, while you're asleep, they'll absorb your minds, your memories. I don't want any part of it. You're forgetting something, Miles. What's that? You have no choice. From city to city, an incredible hysterical panic spreads. As the unimaginable becomes real, the impossible becomes true. Stop and listen! Stop and listen to me! Listen! Listen! Listen to me! They're not human! everybody running from? It's the end of everything. What do you mean? I'm not arguing theory, General. I'm here to ask you, to beg you, to save your own world. It, 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 the, most the most fascinating, fascinating mastermind, mastermind man can conceive. A monster that can control all sources of the Earth's power. Able to pull man-made spaceships from their orbits. Making of those it chooses slaves. <laughs> Of this woman, a willing handmaiden. Of the chief of police, a cold-blooded killer. Well, I've known you for five years. You just killed a man in cold blood. Why? I'll have to place you under protective custody. Peter Graves, the scientist who fought it. Beverly Garland, who believed her love stronger than it. Lee Van Cleef, whose brilliant mind was captured by it. Are you really ready to stop loving me? I'll need you even when no emotion exists. For a few dollars, you can, you can hire a woman who'll fit all your fetishes. She'll match your requirements perfectly. Then if you ever get tired of her, you can always run down to the employment agency for another. You'll know terror to freeze your blood. You'll feel the heart-stopping strength of the most fearful monster ever known. You think you're gonna make a slave of the world? I'll see you in hell first! It conquered the world.
Police headquarters? This is Carter. Johnny Carter. Oh, sure. They're from another planet. What a dilemma for young lovers Steve Terrell and Gloria Castile. You thought I was kidding. Nobody will believe the invasion of the saucer men. All this makes it seem natural for a beer-drinking bull to appoint himself chaperone of Lover's Lane. Hey, for Pete's sake! And a farmer with the longest shotgun you've ever seen plays the villain. What's so funny? <laughs> well, I expected to be frightened on my wedding night, but nothing like this. It's our busy night, too. We've been flooded with calls from people who say they've seen flying saucers and little green monsters. Wonder how that rumor ever got started. It's too fantastic to believe. Just think of it. Only this special unit and the President of the United States will know what happened here tonight. You mean you think we know what's happened? Beautiful, innocent girl on her honeymoon. Her passionate dreams of perfect romance turned into a living nightmare. For this sweetheart she married, the man she had loved, was merely the hollow shell for the invaders from outer space. Bill! Who would believe her? Who could help her through the flesh-crawling terror of this unearthly marriage? when anyone she turned to could be one of them. Could she touch the body of this masquerading alien who wanted to learn the secrets of human love? Your race has no women. It can't have children. It will die out. Eventually, we'll have children with you. What kind of children? All kind. Was it true? Could space monsters mate with Earth women? See the startling answer in the shocker of them all. from Earth to Mars with unimaginable results as Martians assume Earthmen identities. Is that what you plan on doing? Removing and replacing me? Well, as you see, Doctor, you've already been replaced. The day Mars invaded Earth. What happened? Dave, Dave. Oh, honey, what happened? Somebody followed me. Starring Kent Taylor, space scientist, whose experiment backfired. Marie Windsor, the wife, will she too be removed and replaced? What is it? It's unearthly. William Mims, marked for Martian vengeance. Nightmarish, but too terribly, hair-raisingly real. Why have you brought them here? You can't harm me, Dr. Fielding. I don't believe you. You have the weapon. You may use it. No! No! Suddenly, 
A man dies at the controls of a train. Suddenly, a car swerves to destruction. Suddenly, a plane dives to death. The Earth dies screaming. Suddenly, death descends on the four corners of the Earth, and only a handful of human beings survive to live in fear, powerless to combat an unknown terror. Turn it off. Who are you? By the way, I'm not the enemy. I don't know who the enemy is. The Earth dies screaming, and the robots take over. Starring Willard Parker, Virginia Field, Dennis Price, You said that she was dead. She was. She was alive enough tonight, except her eyes. Well, what was the matter with them? She hasn't got any eyes. Here is paralyzing suspense as the Earth dies screaming. Electrifying terror as the Earth dies screaming. Jeff! Peggy! Peggy! The robots. What? Peggy! Stop! <laughs> 